This episode is brought to you by Goalie. Did you know the University of Michigan did a study that found over 80% of apps for kids are designed to lure them into longer gameplay and more in-app purchases? Goalie decided it was time for this to end. Unlike the Kindle and iPad that have endless ads and potentially dangerous content, Goalie is a tablet with only apps that build independent kids. It has no web browser, no social media, and no ads, ever. It has award-winning learning apps like Khan Academy, Duolingo ABC, and Starfall, and the best part is completely parent-controlled. In my house, we use Goalie's kids' calendar to teach my son how to stay on task. He learns life skills like how to make a sandwich by watching one of the hundreds of video classes and can practice it by following along with one of the 50 pre-made routines. As a dad, there's no better feeling than knowing that my son is becoming more independent every day. For more information and to try Goalie risk-free for 30 days, visit getgoalie.com. That's G-E-T-G-O-A-L-L-Y dot com and use the code the Autism Dad to save 10%. Welcome to the Autism Dad Podcast. I'm Rob Gorski. As a single dad to three amazing autistic kids, I've been the go-to resource for parents across the globe navigating neurodivergence since 2010. Building on the success of my award-winning blog, The Autism Dad, this podcast provides parents raising autistic or neurodivergent kids with comfort, community, resources, support, and validation. You'll also hear inspiring stories from parents just like you, reminding you that you're not alone. So don't miss out. New episodes drop every Monday and Wednesday. Subscribe on your favorite podcast listening app and visit theautismdad.com for more information. On this week's episode, I sat down with my friend Ray White, and we have a conversation about what his journey has been like as a dad raising an autistic son. Uh, you know, we talk about the emotional aspect of this for him, you know, what he kind of struggled with, how he overcame some of those things and what, you know, the challenges have been like, what the victories have been like, the progress, all of that stuff that parents go through and experience when they have a child who's diagnosed with something like autism. And, you know, a couple months ago, his wife was on the show, Nikki, and we had that same conversation from her perspective. And today it's Ray's turn. So, you know, listening to Ray share his story, like what this journey has been like for him, I think is going to be very inspiring for the dads out there. You know, there's a lot of us out there and not everyone is comfortable seeking help or talking to people or opening up about what this journey has been like, or they struggle in silence. And, you know, hearing from another dad, I think can be comforting. I think it can help them to recognize that they're not alone, that it's okay to feel the things that they're feeling and that it's going to be okay. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to be okay. And, and Ray does a really good job of doing that. Uh, I think it's also going to be helpful for the moms out there to get some perspective as to what dads experience or what dads might be experiencing because like different people experience things in different ways. And I, and, uh, I really hope you guys find this helpful and I hope you enjoy the interview. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. I really, really appreciate it. We talked to, uh, Nikki a few weeks ago. And I have been uh, really excited to talk to you because you were the first dad um, that that agreed, like, as far as like a married couple, like if I talk to one person, and then I talk to the other, um, you're the first, you're the first person that actually agreed to do that. And that was a really cool, that was a really cool thing because I, I really think that the insight is helpful to, to dads out there who are going through this stuff. And even to the moms or the, or the partners or the other parent, um, see insight, I think is, is helpful. So I appreciate you uh, being here and bumping the time up today. That was super helpful. I do appreciate that as well. Um, if you could just take a second and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are and your family. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, my name's Ray White. Um, I've been me and Nikki have been married for eight, almost nine years now. Uh, we've got three kids. Uh, Sheena's 16, almost 17. Uh, Jocelyn is seven and Ramey is five. He's our autistic son. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 42 years old. Uh, business owner here in Northeast Ohio, born and raised. Uh, left for about 12 years oh, and wow. ended all the way back. Ended up all the way back <laughs> full circle to where I started. So. And, uh, yeah, that kind of puts us where we're at here. Wow. What do you do? Um, we actually have a, a advertising company. We, um, we sell advertising space in local stores, like the grocery stores and drug stores and things like that. Wow. Um, to local businesses like real estate agents, um, insurance agents, 
and we deal with some uh, some healthcare places as well. So that's uh yeah, and we we work Northeast Ohio, Columbus, and then we've got some territories and other places around the country that we also work with. So wow, very very cool. Uh, after this, <laughs> I have questions uh, that you might have. Uh, pick your brain if you don't mind. Oh no problem. Um, okay, so yeah, we talked to Nikki a couple of weeks ago, and she sort of talked about her experience from a mom's perspective, and you know, I wanted to talk to you and, and get your experience with like the diagnosis and what kind of life has been like from the dad's perspective, because there's, there's not a lot of dads that feel comfortable sharing that, you know, and, um, or they struggle with accepting the diagnosis or, um, they just, I think guys, dads want to fix things right? and you can't fix everything. And then when we don't know how to fix it, sometimes we get stuck. <laughs> And, and so I wanted to just know, like, when, like, how did you, when did you suspect that there might be something, uh, with Ramey that would need to be evaluated? I think I was one of the last people, honestly, um, you know, it feels like, you know, some other family members kind of had a suspicion that something was just a little bit. I guess, different, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. the way he kind of was in his own world, you know, and everything for a lot, you know, a lot of times and we'd have family gatherings and, oh, geez, I am so sorry. I thought I turned it off. It's okay. <laughs> My kids will probably bust in at some point. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll apologize in advance for that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, he would be, we'd have family gatherings. He'd be in his own little world, um, you know, and I just kind of took it as, hey, you know, he's just, he's just kind of doing his thing, you know. And um, it was that we had the one well check with his doctor when she first brought it up. And I had never okay. even considered the possibility at that point. But, you know, Nikki let me know later. And she said that she had kind of sort of suspected that maybe that, you know, something might have been there. Um, yeah. And even I'd say, honestly, even after talking with the doctor and going through the evaluation and things like that, I actually kind of found myself minimizing um you know the potential you know kind of okay. like hey you know yeah he might be you know it just might be this or you know maybe it's you know kind of just almost kind of bargaining with myself not like you know oh my god you know my kids aut might be autistic you know just kind of like a looking for a little bit more than the silver lining you know and it's until the actual we got the actual diagnosis there wasn't you know it, that's kind of where i found myself so I guess I was a little bit slower to come up, you know, come down the path, um, you know, but then once it was, once it was established that that's what it was, you know, we kind of, that was it. It kind of, that, that, that's what we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, what do we have to do moving forward to, you know, make things easy for him and, you know, what, you know, what's going to be necessary kind of, cause I had a, I also had a different perspective of what autism was before this. You know, oh, okay. you know, I did not, I had no idea that there was a spectrum, you know, I can, I thought that, you know, oh. it's like autism or not, you know, kind of like, you know, almost like okay. down syndrome or not down syndrome kind of, you know, so it was, yeah. so I had to, I learned a lot about just autism in general that, you know, there are different degrees, you know, cause you, you think autism, a lot of times you think you think of the kids who can't be, you know, they can't have any physical contact that, you know, that, you know, they have, um, you know, All stereotypical. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. So that's that's kind of where my brain went initially, but I couldn't have been more wrong, you know. And obviously now I know that after a few years of, you know, into our journey with this. So but uh yeah, it was uh it was definitely not a it wasn't that I wasn't willing to accept it, you know, in the beginning. It was just that I wasn't sure how to process that because I was, you know, nothing can prepare you for it, obviously. No, I, you know, all three of my kids, uh, are autistic and I, like, I knew something was going on with my oldest cause his, he, he experienced massive regression around his fourth birthday. Like, like you put him to bed one person and he woke up somebody entirely different. Um, and so when he was diagnosed, that's what I thought autism looked like. Right. I thought that was autism, right? Like you said, I mean, it's either it is or it isn't. Right. 
And when my youngest was born and he was, you know, delayed in his speech, he didn't talk till he was four. Um, and you know, there were a lot of challenges with him when he was little. I didn't think it was autism because that's what autism was. You know, my oldest is, is what I thought autism was. And so when, when Emmett was diagnosed, it's like, oh, okay, well, then autism can look like this and like this. Right. right. And then when my, when Elliot came around, well, Elliot was, is my middle child, but like when, when it came to him, I didn't see it at all. And I don't know if I was in denial or I was just, it was just, he presented so differently. And it wasn't until like his preschool orientation where I saw him interacting with peers or really not interacting with peers kind of off by himself um, is when like, it just hit me. I felt like I was run over by a train. And, and then that, that's, that's how I really truly began to understand it. Like it's one name for millions of different variations and, and combinations and possibilities. And it's really hard to wrap your head around that, you know? So, so you're, so, and I mean, it didn't even really sound like you struggled with it really. It was just sort of processing. But once, once you actually had the diagnosis, was there a process of acceptance for you or you were just like, okay, this is what it is. What do we do now? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, you know, and I, I went through, you know, like a whole battery of emotions, you know, with it, you know, cause there's obviously, you know, when you have, when you have a child, you know, you have certain expectations, you know, and things that you envision for yeah. them and the way that their life is going to turn out and be and everything, you know, and, and this is the kind of thing that turns that on its head. You know, especially with this, because you have no idea where the journey is going to go. You know, there's just there is yeah. there's there's no there's no linear path with this. Um, you know, so I had to kind of kind of went through that back and forth, you know, where it was just, you know, you start to worry for them, too. You know, are they you know, how how's it how's what's their quality of life going to be, you know, as an adult growing up? Am I going to be able to do everything that they need? You know, and that kind of so it kind of there was a yeah, there was a whole lot of just they said it was just a whole mix of stuff so it, it i wouldn't say it was just a quick switch over but you know it 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 wasn't as hard as i would have thought if you had told me you know 10 years ago hey you know what you're going to have a child who's going to be autistic and it's not you're not going to find out until they're almost 2 years old you know and it's mm -hmm. i think i dealt with it way better than i could have ever hoped honestly what i think is really interesting and i'm big into kind of reframing things because i find that for me, it helps me to process things when I can kind of change the way that I, I look at something and turn something negative into positive. Uh, but I was talking to a mom and, you know, she had talked about how when she went into this, like her, her like, in quote unquote, like grieving process, she said she realized that it, it wasn't so much grieving as it was figuring out that, you know, she had, I guess, kind of gone into this thinking, like, how do I change my, my kid in order to, in, in order for them to do what they need to do in life, like to, to, to learn to navigate life. And she says, and that process is really difficult because ultimately you don't change your kids. Ultimately what you're learning to do is adapt to who your kids are. And, and that process requires you to sort of let go of who you are and grow into a, the person that you need to be in order to raise your kids. And and sort of like what you were talking about made me, it, it kind of, it, it made me think about that because it seems like a very similar path without actually, you know, using the same words. And I think a lot of dads get stuck and they don't always find their way through and become sort of detached or become uh, like just struggle with that whole process. And, and, and so I, I, I appreciate the way that you shared that because I think it can help people to kind of navigate, uh, that themselves. Yeah. I mean, it is, I, I, and I, you know what I did, I also, you know, I found myself, you actually kind of reminded me of something too. I found myself also in the beginning trying to, I guess, in a way of trying to accept it was sort of minim, it, minimizing it, kind of looking at like, okay, you know what, maybe he's just a barely on the spectrum, you know, and then, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? And then, oh yeah, you know, he'll kind of grow out of some of this stuff and, you know, maybe he'll just start talking a little bit later and things, you know, just, yeah, it's, 
it's kind of funny how we can convince ourselves of things and kind of start to trick ourselves without even realizing we're doing it. So, yeah, I mean, and that was part of the process, too. But I think that's probably a natural thing for a parent just in general, you know, but I think being able to recognize it and then accept what it is and move on is that's 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 the difference, you know. Yeah. And, and, I, and I will also say to kind of your point, the reality is that you know, the, the place that your child is in at that point in time, they're diagnosed doesn't mean that's where they're going to be forever. It, it just, it's a way of identifying where they are so they can assess the needs and help you get them the help that they need in order to maybe work through some of that stuff. Cause like my youngest didn't say anything until he was four years old and now never stops talking. <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't even like a smooth transition. It was just like one day he just started talking and it was whole conversations. And it freaked me out. I mean, it was like, it was amazing, but it was like, it, it just sort of like, what is happening? Like, how, how did this just happen? Like somebody downloaded like what, the system update. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like, that's exactly what it was like. It was like, it was like, oh, there was an update last night. And <laughs> boom. This is Emmett 2.1 or something like, but, but it happens all the time. And so I, I think it's important to have that, that hope that, you know, that, that things can improve or can change or they can overcome. But at the same time, accept where you are and help them to be, you know, you know, like meet your kids where they're at and then help them to grow and achieve and, and, uh, kind of evolve into whoever they're going to be, you know, meet their potential and be happy and healthy and all that stuff. So I, I, that was a really, um, I like your approach to that. I think it's a, I think that it's a, a good example of how we should, we should do that, you know? So what has been the most challenging aspect of this for you as a dad? Um, honestly, I mean, the most challenging is just was get, getting, I'm trying to think how to explain it. It's kind of the whole you envision things being one way and then they are they it takes a completely different path, you know, and and it is and part of it is that not being able to you can only do so much. You know, you can only change so much and influence so much, you know, and it kind of trying to find that balance of meeting them where they're at and mm -hmm helping them get to where you feel like they need to get to, you know, kind of because you can't just drag them down the path. You know, you it's you got to go at their pace, but you still have to come and meet them. So it's a completely different approach to parenting than I experienced with, you know, with my other two, um, you know, where yeah. it was a it was it was just completely different. So, it, you know, it was and, and you're learning on the fly, you know, you don't have a chance to hit pause and kind of read all this stuff and figure this out. Yeah, that, 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 that's very relatable because like all the parents that I have talked to who have that blend of like an autistic kid and the neurotypical siblings were not prepared. Like, like having neurotypical kids did not prepare them to, to, to meet the needs of their autistic child or their child with ADHD or whatever the deal is. And and in a lot of ways, I mean, it is like starting over because a lot of the stuff that you learn, some of the stuff applies across the board, right? But like you have to, you have to learn all kinds of new things. And I think that too is an adjustment um, for parents, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't, you know, cause it, it is, it's, it's, it's almost like you almost got to throw out 90% of the playbook that you use for your, you know, your neurotypical kids, you know, and, and start rewriting the new one as the game goes, you know, <laughs> it's, it is a, uh, you know, and it's a huge exercise in patience too. You know, there's, you know, cause there's obviously a lot of things that you end up having to deal with that you never have to even think of, you know, with, you know, with your neurotypical kids. Um, yeah. You know, just even sidecar, you know, symptoms like, you know, uh, like Ramey has, you know, we deal with bouts of the cyclical vomiting syndrome you know, which is just, yeah, I remember that. That is just, I mean, and it's brutal and, you know, it's one of the most helpless feelings out there when they're going through it. But 
that wasn't anything that I ever had to consider, you know, just, uh, you know, with the, you know, with my other kids. So it is, it's, it's a lot of learning and learning on the fly. And I mean, you can kind of, you can seek other people's situations for, you know, some help, but it's just every situation is completely unique too. You know? Yeah. It's really hard. Cause like people, like people ask me for advice on specific things, like all the time. And I, I, you know, like I hate, I mean, I, I want to help people or I wouldn't be doing any of this, but like, I hate, I hate giving advice on, on like really specific situations because like, I, I have no idea. I mean, like what worked for me may have absolutely no impact or may have a negative impact. Right. I, I don't know why your kid is aggressive. I don't know why this or that or whatever, but what I can do is be like, look, you know, I dealt with aggression with, with my, my, uh, my oldest and my youngest. I know what that's like. I don't necessarily know what's triggering the aggression in your kid, but this is what I did for mine may, may or may not work for you, but it's, it's something, you know? Right. And, and even if the situations aren't the same, just kind of, I think knowing it's validating to know that you are not the only person struggling with something related to this. And, and I think that, that especially for dads, we isolate, we kind of, um, we don't talk about it as much as maybe we could. We don't necessarily connect with other people who are going through it. We kind of like play very close to the, uh, um, you know, keep our cards close and, and, and whatever. And for whatever reason, but, uh, it is helpful to, to connect with, with other people. And that's one of the reasons like, I'm, I'm grateful that you were willing to come on and do this because we dads need to hear from other dads. And, you know, you, you have, um, you know, like your process and what you're talking about is like, I can totally, I can totally relate to, to that. Like, like as a dad and, and, you know, my hope is that other people can hear that and kind of follow that same path. And, and just find their way, you know, through that, that challenge. Um, what do you, well, how, how, how is Ramey doing now? I mean, he's thriving. He's, you know, he really is. He's, he's thriving. He surprises us on a regular basis, you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, he's constantly showing us that while he might not show it in the moment he's taking things in he's learning and he's you know he's processing all this stuff that's going on around him it's just a matter of when he deems it worthy of showing you kind of you know he, where you know it'll be um you know whether it's talking you know about you know certain things like saying certain words you know and we you know we have his talking device that we use with him and you know we try to repeat things to him over and over you know to just kind of show him okay this is you know, here's your Cheerios, you know, this is your pouch. What color pouch do you want? You know, those things. And, and then all of a sudden one day he'll just say it, you know, never said it before, never gave even a slight hint that he was ever going to say it. And, you know, things like that. Um, you know, just things that little things that he does, you know, he, his kindness, you know, he is, uh, he's so affectionate, you know, which sometimes really shocks us too. Cause I tell you back in the beginning where, you know, you have your, stereotypical view of what autism is and you know that yeah i mean he does he's i say he's thriving he's he's thriving he's he blows us away and it makes us feel better about him going forward as far as like well next year he's going to be in kindergarten you know in a you know mm -hmm. in a regular school with his sister you know and it makes us feel a little bit a little bit better about that you know that you know he he he's he's adaptable you know, so that's, uh, you know, I think I, I, it's, it's less scary. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we, some of the fear. Yeah. Um, how, and I, you know, I didn't really ask, I didn't ask Nikki this, but it just occurred to me when we were talking, um, how, how do your, how, how is the dynamic between your kids? Like, how do they, was there a learning curve for them or did they just sort of, I mean, kids really just, I think kids adapt a lot of times better than we do as adults, but like, what was that, what was that dynamic like for them? 
you know, surprisingly, they seem to just kind of roll with it. Um, you know, I think part of it where, like, you know, Jocelyn's seven now. She, you know, she's two years older than Raimi. So when he got his, you know, was getting his diagnosis, she was three, you know, going on four. So mm-hmm. she almost doesn't know any different, you know. But even at that yeah. time, you know, as she was, as we were going along, you know, we had to explain to her sometimes, you know, Raimi, he's doing that, you know, and that's because, of, you know, because he's autistic, you know, and that's why he, you know, he's doing these certain behaviors or, you know, things or, you know, sometimes he would just come up to her and, you know, sometimes he might just come up and take a toy that she was playing with away, you know, and we had to explain to her, look, he doesn't really understand the concept of sharing, you know, and everything. And she, bless her heart, she has been an angel. She is, I I have no worries. Like, I know that he has a protector and somebody Mm -hmm. that's, you know, they're, they're two years apart, so they're going to grow up together, you know, that she's there you know she dotes on him she is she's just she is she's amazing um and his his older sister sheena you know she's almost 17 she's gonna start her senior year but she's been awesome too you know she's just kind of everybody adjusted you know there was never any i never really felt any like you know any kind of disappointment or just anything negative really you know everybody just kind of well what do we need to do you know what do you need to do what do i need to do to help you know and everything so um you know and obviously there was a little bit of a learning curve but yeah i'd say that they've done they've done very well and i have no complaints because they could have gone the other way easily oh yeah you know oh yeah well kids kids can sometimes get resentful in the sense not because of who their sibling is but because of the attention and the demand you know it, it's hard even with my own kids, even have them all three of them autistic, there were the needs were vastly different. And so I would find myself spending more time on the one who was the loudest, <laughs> right? Like that squeaky wheel. Yep. And even the other kids get re- resentful sometimes because they want like, I want that attention. I want that time and they deserve that time. And, but it's like, how there's only so much of you that you can spread between everybody. And, and, and that balance is really hard. And it's nice to, uh, I, I just saw, uh, Nikki must've posted, it was a reel or something the other day where, where Ramey walked up and gave his sister a hug. Mm-hmm. And it was like, that was like, you could just, you could just, it was just a cool thing because like, I know it doesn't always happen. No, they don't always recognize that the other person is there and, or, or they're not in the same place at the same time. And that was, that was a really, that was a cool that was a cool moment. Yeah, and we uh, and you, I can total I can relate to that. We we try to be and we all we try to be hyper aware of levels of attention, you know, because obviously Ramy requires more attention than the other two combined. Um, you know, but we try mm-hmm. to find that balance. Um, you know, where maybe, you know, on a on a weekend, you know, cuz obviously Nikki's the primary caretaker, so she spends the most time with Ramy. Um, and he Mm -hmm. takes up most of her time, even when the others are around, but you know, on the weekend, sometimes I'd be like, Hey, you know what? Jocelyn needs new shoes. You know, Nick, Nikki and Joss, you know, mommy daughter trip to the store, just the two of them to the store to just go be together and go do something. And I'll take, you know, I'll watch her. You know, we try to, we try to fit things like that in so that she gets that one-on-one time, you know, she gets more one-on-one time with me than Nikki. And, but we do, I say we do, we try to be aware of that just so that there isn't like a, there doesn't end up being a, a huge difference. And then, you know, any kind of resentment building up, whether they realize it or not. That's, uh, that's a, that's really cool. You know, I, I get a lot of questions about how do you help kids to not fall through the cracks? Because like the lesser demanding kids can sometimes fall through the cracks because they're, they just, it is, I mean, the reality is it's squeaky wheel, right? Like, I mean, it just, it, it just is. And, um, and I like, I like, uh, it's really cool how you guys, you know, find whatever balance you can, uh, cause it's not, it's never gonna be perfect, no. but you find, you find what works. And, and I think that's great. You know, I, I think that's why there's never like a good answer for that question. <laughs> it's like, you just gotta, I mean, I don't know what your life is. Like you just, you just gotta find, you know, do what you can when you can. and. You know, we all feel like we could do better. We all feel like we could do more, but the reality is we can only do what we can do. Yeah. And autism is a challenging thing to, to kind of throw into the mix. And it just kind of is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, what, 
so I wanted to ask you this too. Uh, so with, with the raising Ramy platform, right. Which has gotten really big yeah. and, and I didn't realize you guys were in Ohio. Right. Uh, I, I had someone else point out that you guys were in Ohio and I was like, Holy crap. <laughs> like there has never been anybody in Ohio. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought I was the only one. Uh, and, and how do you, how do you view the social media aspect of your lives? I guess, like, are you comfortable with that or do you, do you kind of shy away from kind of being involved in that? I guess, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it's me personally, I'm not a big sharer, you know, where, you know, Nikki, you know, she handles most of that, obviously. And I, I, I make occasional appearances, like maybe passing through a video or something like that, but you know, um, and that's just, that's cameos. Just, yeah. That's just, cameos by Ray. Yeah. That's just kind of me, you know, I, I it's, uh, so I, it's, I love it for what she's doing. You know, um, yeah. I give like, for example, sometimes she reads some of the messages that she gets from moms out there and stuff that are just, yeah. you know, you've, um, you helped me so much, you know, seeing these videos just makes me hopeful for my kid, you know, things like that. And I find myself, you know, that's, that's really more than anything what it's about, you know, for, and, and, yep. and that that's, I guess that's the reward of it, you know, obviously mm -hmm. is, you know, just being able to help other people because it can be so isolating and to be able to see people who are going through the same thing like that. Um, you know, it, it's, it, you know, I, I, I enjoy that part of, you know, she sends me screenshots or she'll read them to me sometimes. And it just, you know, it, it, it warms your heart, you know, and, Obviously, it wasn't something that was planned. It just sort of happened one day, you know, back mm -hmm. I think it was back in October. And it was uh, just nothing could prepare us for, you know, for where it was getting ready to go. And, um, you know, but and I also, you know, I, I've, we've had a lot of conversations about, you know, um, making sure that, you know, because the first thing I was concerned about for Nikki was obviously the negative type of people who show up in those kind of threads and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. for the sake of doing, Oh yeah, it, you know, and things oh, like yeah. that, you know, and I, I kind of, that was one of the things that I really just, I kept checking on her a lot in the beginning, just to make sure that that wasn't getting to her that, you know, because just people can just say some unbelievably nasty things, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, so that, and that has gone okay. She's dealt with all of that really well. So, I mean, all in all, I think it's, I I said I like it for the fact that just she's able to help so many people because it can be so isolating in the situation, you know, and you know, it's and I think it'll be really cool one day when Ramy gets older to look back on and see all that stuff too. You know, it's kind of a almost like cataloging his childhood too, you know. So, all the people that he's inspired and yeah. um the parents, even the parents that he's helped. I, you know, it's like uh like I started back in two, 2010. So it's been a, it's been a long time and there are nasty people out there who just feel like their opinion is so valid that they need to dump it on you and they can be horrible, mm -hmm. like just absolutely horrible, horrible. And that, that part of it can be tough. I mean, I, I don't care so much anymore. People still get under my skin sometimes, right? but for the most part, whatever, but it's like therapy for me. And it's, and I keep, I keep referring to it as like purpose to the pain. Like no matter how hard things are in my life, I know that, I mean, we'll get through it and whatever, and it's worth it to help my kids. But knowing that someone can learn something from it helps me to process everything. And, and it helps me find the strength to like get back up when I fall. And I don't, I don't know that I would have been able to do everything that I have done if I didn't have that outlet, you know? And so like when you get those emails or those messages where you're just, it just shows the impact that you're having on someone else's life that you've never met, probably never will meet, uh, from anywhere in the world, really. Right. It's, it's like, like, wow, like that's powerful. And it, it really does like, okay, well, you know, we can do this, <laughs> you know, we'll just, just another day we're going to push through it and we're going to whatever. And I, so I think it's, I think it's amazing, uh, what you guys are doing collectively. And, um, 
the other thing that I wanted to ask you was what do you, what is, like, what is the most challenging? Well, did I already ask you that? What is the most challenging part of this? Uh, it was, that was the most challenging part with Ramey's diagnosis. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I just started back in ADHD meds no, that's okay. this week. So <laughs> I understand. <believe laughs> little, <me>. Same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like I can, like I can kind of, but, um, okay. So like, what is, what is the most challenging aspect for you of, of raising an autistic child? Like, cause sometimes it's not the child themselves. It's just the world around, you know, or, or whatever, but like, what is, what is, what is something that's currently really challenging? Um, you know, one of the most challenging things is just going and doing things sometimes, you know, where, you know, you maybe because, you know, people don't always understand that, you know, for us to pack up and go, you know, 45 minutes to another relative's house yep. for a gathering or something like that, it's not as simple as just hopping in the car. All right, guys, let's go. You know, we've got things we got to prep for. We got to, you know, we, we, we have all kinds of contingency plans depending on what's going to, you know, what happens, you know, along the way. Um, you know, we got to worry about what, you know, we always describe it as Ramey's cup, you know, his, his, is, yeah. is his cup full? Is it, you know, when it starts to overflow, we can recognize that. And it's like, okay, you know what, it's time to try to remove him from the situation, you know, or maybe it's just time for us to go, you know, so we have to monitor that we have to be hyper aware of what's going on, you know, so it, that's one of the hardest things is, you know, like I said, we you just can't just pick up and go, you know, so it's a, um, things have to be more planned out you know, and it's less spontaneous. Yeah, it really, you know, and it, it is what it is. You know, the, the other, our other kids deal with it pretty well. You know, we try to get them out and do a lot as much as we possibly can anyway. But, um, you know, that is one of the things I'd say is probably the hardest, you know, cause the other stuff is, you know, it kind of is what it is. We're kind of used to it, but that that's one thing that just doesn't really change too much, you know, is cause we don't know how he's going to respond to certain situations. And he surprises us sometimes, you know, where, you know, we went to a, uh, Nikki had an art festival that she went to, you know, that, that she was, uh, had her paintings at last year and they had a live band playing and everything. And it was super loud. And we walked around and I had Ramey and he walked over towards the stage and wanted to be closer to the music, you know, which I was oh, the wow. last thing I expected, you know, we've, um, been in situations with large crowds and he's been okay. So it's, you know, there's no, and, and it's one of those things too, where there's no guidebook for this because there's no always, there's not always a rhyme or reason for why he's okay with some situations and not okay with other situations, you know? So that's that the unpredictability of that is, you know, that's also a little bit tough trying to go out and do things. What would you, what would you say is the most rewarding for you? Um, I would honestly say how much he's changed me and the way mm. just I view not even just other people, but just my just viewpoint on the world. I see so I, I have a brand new lens that I see things through because of him. Mm -hmm. You know, if it wasn't for him, I'd it would you know, I wouldn't. It just it's it's one of those things you can't really you can't really explain to somebody effectively if they don't haven't kind of been through, but he did he just kind of, he altered everything and he's made me a better person overall, you know, than, you know, than I was before. And just, I think that is definitely, definitely the most rewarding aspect of it. Just, it is, it just, he, it expands your empathy. It, you know, it, it, it expands your level of understanding with other people, you know, in situations and things like that. So I, I, yeah, he's changed me more than I could ever imagine. And I can, I can absolutely relate to that because it's, it was very similar for me. Like, um, you know, you don't go into it thinking you're going to change or, or even recognizing the things that will change, but, it, but they're just little things that add up, right? Like it's just a mm -hmm. shift in your perspective and it's just, oh, you know, like there's a lot of things I pay attention to more now than what I did before, right? Like the little things are more important to me than the grandiose whatevers. Right. And I appreciate, I just appreciate life more now, I think, than I did, Yeah. you know, before. And that's, that's because of my kids and what they, what they have taught me. So I, that's very, very relatable. Yeah. Um, 
Do you have any advice for parents who are just starting out on this journey? Like maybe they just got the diagnosis and, you know, I, trying to figure it out. I would say just from, just from our experience and everything, I mean, it would be that don't try to look all the way down the end of the road, you know, because you, you just don't know. And you're just going to cause yourself more stress than anything, you know, kind of just take it one step at a time and meet them, you know, meet them where they are and listen to them, you know, not verbally, just their cues and, you know, find out, you know, pay attention to the little things with them, because that's how you really, that's how with Ray, at least our experience with Ramey, it's the little subtle things that he does. And, you know, that we pick up on that tells us that, you know, he's starting to get a little bit upset or he's start, you know, he's starting to get a little wound up. Just think, you know, pay attention to that stuff, you know, and just, and you know what, it's not the end of the world. It's not, you know, you're probably going to end up being a better person in the end for this as, you know, as, as you know, when, mm -hmm. when you get through it and don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, whether it's going for therapy, nice. um, you know, reaching out to other parents online, you know, such as yourself and Nikki who were out there, you know, that was a huge help for us in the beginning, you know, whereas, you know, actually I, I, I was the one who told Nikki about you. I, you know, I just happened to come across your page on Facebook one day and, uh, you know, and I was you describing, if I remember correctly, I think it was the trip you guys took to Disney. Um, Oh, Orlando, Orlando. We, yeah, we were in Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember I was reading that and I was telling Nikki about that, you know, so, and, but seeing, you know, that, that was a huge help for us too. You know what I mean? So you're not alone. You know, there, there is a community of people out here that, you know, and then that old adage, you know, takes a village, you know, well, this is oh, yeah. our village, you know, this is our village and being able to draw on other people's experiences is going to make things a lot easier for you too. It might not be a one for one, but at least it'll be similar enough, you know, that you get something out of it. And, I mean, that's really, you know, I, I might have rambled a little bit there, but, you know, no, that's good. That's, you know, that would be my suggestion. You know, that, that that's what I could have used somebody telling me. in the beginning. That's that's solid advice, man. Like, I, I think. Everybody has different advice when I ask that question, but a lot of it is it's a similar theme. And uh, that was really that was really good advice. So um, I, I really appreciate your time. It was really nice to meet you finally. Yeah. And, um, I'm glad you guys are in Ohio. Yeah. It's, it's, it's there. I mean, it's like normally when I've connected with people, they're everywhere else, but <laughs> Ohio yeah. and it, and it's, it's, it's nice to have, to recognize a growing community in my community. Right. right? So like, it's, it's, it just, it's less, uh, I don't know. It feels more connected. Yeah. So that's a, that's a positive thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story and uh, tell everybody that I said hello and you know, we'll, we'll figure this whole journey out. Oh yeah. Still on mine. We'll get there. <laughs> Wherever there is real quick before I let you go. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. I, I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and it has a positive impact on your life because that's what I'm aiming for here. As a reminder, you can visit listen.theautismdent.com. You can learn about me and anything related to the show. You can subscribe on any one of your favorite podcast listening apps so you never miss a new episode. And please take a moment and rate us on Apple Podcasts. There'll be a link in the show notes below for you just to click and it'll take you right there. It takes like 30 seconds and it makes a big difference. So it's a great way to support the show and uh, help keep the wheels turning. So have a great week and we'll talk.